Hello, I'm Robert and welcome to my channel where I talk about everything automated algorithmic trading or simply algo trading. Let's get straight into it because this is going to be a busy video. You are looking at the market right here and now. This is a live look of my real money account for Euro USD, my floating grid technique or my passive approach. And we can see that right now my account is doing very well. Last week's sell-off has been a whirlwind of profitability for me. But it has also carried quite a few risks in that I took eight stop losses. Now I've recovered the account itself in terms of what I've lost. And if you've watched my last video, you know that I'm never going to recover the amount I lost. Just that the account balance has been recovered. The psychology here is unmistakably critical. So if you haven't watched that video, please be sure to check the playlist to see it. Getting back to this market right now, you can clearly see what I'm holding for my actual risks, where if I sold everything and walked away, I would still be clearly ahead of the game with a nice little profit. But a lot of what needs to be talked about isn't just the technique, but the real world implications for algo trading of paying the bills. And that is, at some point, you've got to think about paying the rent on the servers for running your strategies. And that is something I have been spending my entire weekend really looking at in terms of where I want to go with my own trading. And as we can see by looking at the market, the range is pretty well fixed and we are pretty much right in the middle of it right now. We can see how the market has had a major correction after pushing a reasonably high level that hasn't occurred for several months. And looking at the market in general, we can see that this range is very fixed, with very few exceptions. And that's important in moving forward with the market, particularly if you are looking to change strategies or move from a passive approach to an aggressive approach. Being able to figure out what that is is really critical and being able to even decide whether or not you want to take that kind of a risk is extremely important. Passive versus aggressive is a keystone in many trading approaches. If you have the resources, you can always add more money and continue both of them. It's always good to have a hedge if you want to put the risks into the market. And there are risks associated with doubling or tripling your balance in a given market. Switching from one to the other is also an option depending upon how you feel about the market. The passive approach has done exceptionally well. I've been running this approach for nine months straight and it has really done very well in managing the entire market. And that is something that has to be considered as a long-term issue, a long-term consequence of this trading technique. The passive approach really does survive long-term market volatility and unpredictability, but it has a consequence. And that is the profitability of the passive approach is significantly lower than an aggressive approach. Of course, that also means the risks of a passive approach is significantly reduced. So there are trade-offs between passive and aggressive when you're trading. There are always trade-offs and finding that balance is critical, not just in your trading but how your trading style develops. I've spent four years of my life building these techniques. So for my own trading approach, 
they fit well. They take into account my own personality and my temperament for not wanting to really wait in terms of market fluctuations. I like the volatility. I like the way the market can get aggressive. But at the same time, I don't like over leveraging my account. So it's kind of a balance that I have found within my own trading technique that fits well what my expectations are in trading. For the purposes of this market, for Euro USD, this is my preferred market. This is what I prefer to trade in regularly. I do trade in other pairs occasionally, like recently my 90 day stint with the Australian US dollar combination. But this is where I prefer to really put my money. And being at the midpoint, the market could really go either way. The order book shows that it is likely to continue downward to some degree, but there is enough interest at the higher levels that it could go back to pushing the upper range. That's good for the long-term standards of where I want the market to be, the back and forth dynamics of trading. So Euro USD is really going to be an interesting pair moving forward as I think this dynamic is going to continue within its long-term range for the foreseeable future. And I say foreseeable as anywhere from one week to one month as a reasonable context. I think trying to go beyond that or trying to set anything in stone is a risk that's going to cause losses. It's best just to flow with the market and to accept it for what it is. An ever-changing river that has a constant mind of its own. That is where the passive technique really shines because it doesn't care where the market goes. It just follows it, taking profits and losses as needed. The aggressive technique, however, is very different. It's an attack on the market where it takes advantage as much as it can, but at a higher risk level. And that is an extremely important situation when you're looking at where the market has been and where it's likely to go because your risks are going to dramatically increase. I was, as we've seen and as I've demonstrated over the last couple of videos, my Australian US dollar combination took my margin limit all the way up to 49%. It really pushed the extremes of what my account could handle. But the results of the profits were staggering. So the profitability was worth the risk. And that really is one of the fundamental keystones of trading. Understanding your risks. Understanding what your risk appetite is in relation to how you actually trade. The, Austra the Australian dollar US dollar combination has been a whirlwind of profitability. But those profits have consequences. You can see right now that if I walk away from the table, I'm going to lose $5.22 compared to what I've earned for this pair. That is an easily acceptable loss. And that is really the one of the key consequences that needs to be talked about. And I'll show some charts later that we go through this in detail. So as you look at your trading and you think about how to maximize your profitability while continuing to minimize your risk, you're going to have to put passive versus aggressive on a scale and try to find a balance between the two somehow in order to weather the market in some of the most crazy ways while still 
making sure your VPS or your services that you use are paid for. And that is really the underlying theme. At some point, you have to think about how you're going to continue to pay for the services you need to trade. If you're using your own equipment, it's not free. Just because you're not paying rent for a server like I am, doesn't mean you still aren't paying for electrical costs or internet costs or other functionalities for running your equipment. There is a cost for trading. Whether you rent it or you own the equipment, it doesn't matter. You still, at some point, pay that cost. And that is the whole process of what this next part is going to talk about. So let's actually look at the charts and see how the equity has played out over the course of the last nine months. Looking at the equity of the Euro USD market, we can clearly see the last nine months of this passive technique. It has done very well and made at the height of over $160 before I took the eight stop losses. And we can even see now that it has been recovering at a consistent and steady pace equal to the previous gains. So we have enough information in looking at this chart that we can clearly see this is a long-term winner. And that really is the whole point of the process, long-term. When you're dealing with a passive technique, you could expect to be in the market significantly longer than an aggressive technique. And right now we can clearly see just how long that is. The problem is, is that this hasn't paid for the server. This is nine months of activity and it's nowhere as near being able to pay for the server it runs on. Now, I could increase the budget, and that could possibly increase the revenue. But realistically, I should be able to cover the server in a way that doesn't need to increase my risks exponentially. And that's where the aggressive technique can be a benefit. So as we look at this chart, we can see nine months worth of trading activity slow steady and consistent it is a winner in that regard but when you factor in the real world costs of renting the server or paying for electricity and internet connection it doesn't cover the bills whereas if we look at the australian dollar aggressive technique we can clearly see a very different approach, a very different context. We can see where I started out passive. And basically here at the roughly $21 mark of profit, I switched to an aggressive technique. So roughly within two months of the aggressive technique, I've made nine months worth of profitability. So where would this be if I extrapolate that over the course of, say, eight months? I would have four times the budget. Right now, I am at roughly $185, or we'll just say 160 for comparability to the passive. If I had ran this for nine months, I could expect, reasonably speaking, four times the profitability, or 160 times four. That is a stark and dramatic difference between aggressive and passive. And even at this level, for the two months that this has been working, I could have easily have paid for the server that this runs on and still walked away with profit. 
This is the real world consequences of trading and dealing with the real possible situations of having a good strategy but just not being able to make enough money to reasonably and rationally actually trade in a profitable level when you factor in the real costs of your trading. Let's focus on just the aggressive part of this strategy. Let's look at the pure aggressiveness and see just how quickly it was able to accumulate the resources it got. And you can see that for the duration that the market did, Okay, let's try this again. This clearly shows the difference between passive and aggressive. In two months, I made nine months worth of profit for the passive system. Now that equally means that the risks are just as high. So if I can make four times the profit, Reasonably speaking, the risks are four times higher, four times likely to end up with a stop loss. So you have to balance the two approaches. And for what I have established here, it's clear that this technique is going to work well moving forward, but not this market. For me, where I'm at the point of having only $5 in the Australian U.S. dollar market, I can clean this off the table, walk away, and put this technique to work in my Euro USD plan. And that's probably what I'm going to do moving forward. Thinking about the real consequences of actually being able to begin to cover the equipment I am renting to run this strategy. It is a significant and real world circumstance that has to be done and considered for anybody that is in trading. At some point, your bills have to be paid. So in moving forward, that's my plan. That's my direction to focus this technique into my preferred market of trading. So two months of trading versus nine months of trading for the same exact amount of profitability. That is a significant difference that needs to be really and carefully looked at. Now, from my perspective, keeping this kind of a system on the back table is definitely going to be something I'm going to do. And should I ever want to put a passive system in play, this is, no questions, one of the best techniques available. The floating grid cannot be understood or underestimated for its resiliency in extreme and insane market conditions. This technique is the go-to that will beat interest rates of a bank no matter where you are. You will make more money trading this than you will interest in your bank account as long as you have it set up properly and have done your research properly for the pair you are trading. But you need to think about the balance of your account versus what you pay per month to rent your servers or your expenses for running this type of a strategy. Passive techniques are a gold mine of protection and hedging against risk, as long as you think about the consequences. Realistically, if you have the budget, then absolutely run this side by side with an aggressive one, like I have done for the last five months. There's no question that this is a winner, but you need to think about the budget. For me, I want to combine my budget into one pair to increase my profitability. 
So at this point, this is something I'm going to move to the back table and focus on my aggressive strategies, continuing to build and work on these strategies moving forward to actually cover my expenses better. So let me know what you think. Are you a passive trader or do you prefer the aggressive trading? Or do you prefer a combination of both, hedging against one with the other? There's really no wrong way in this discussion as long as you're profitable. And it's clear that the combination is remarkable. But before we wrap this up, there's one final thing I want to show, and that is the actual numbers. Here we are in the VPS where I'm showing month by month the profitability of each strategy. And you can clearly see with the Australian US dollar, the passive approach versus when I started moving towards the aggressive approach. And you can see just how stark of a difference passive versus aggressive really is. And when we move down to the floating grid, where you can see the actual amounts here, again, showing only the passive approach, it's very clear that passive is profitable, but this doesn't cover my expenses. In fact, it's only half of my expenses for the server I rent to run this strategy on. But up here, I have double the profitability of the cost of my server. Real world consequences coming to reality. Even when you look at the number of trades, the average trade or average per trade, the average trades per month, you can clearly see how the aggressive stands out over the passive. Even if you look at the average profit per month, the aggressive is twice as profitable as the passive. $31 average per month versus $15 average per month. So you can clearly see the differences, and as this continues, you can only imagine how much more different it's going to get as the markets continue to build and correlate with more information. These are the kinds of analysis you have to make on a regular basis. Having a profitable technique isn't enough. Having a profitable technique that covers your expenses is critical because if you're not covering your expenses you're not really making money you can literally be profitable and still lose money at the same time and that is the case with my passive approach this month and this month are the only two months that came close to actually covering my VPS but it still ends up at a loss. It costs me $40 a month to run this server. And that's significantly cheaper than if I was to use my own equipment. And that's the point. There is a cost to trading. But here, I've made double the profit. And here is almost double the profit. So realistically, I have covered my expenses dramatically in the aggressive approach. Now, you could argue that I don't have enough information, but the trades say otherwise. 1,099 trades tell me that I have enough information to make a reasonable extrapolation of what to expect. The technique is stable. The basis behind the technique is reasonable. Even if you look at the actual trades I'm holding at the moment, 
with the aggressive technique. My oldest trade is 99 days. That is three, a little about more, just a little over three months versus nine months of holding with my passive technique. So in half the time, I've made the same amount of money. And you can clearly see how it functions and works, including where my stop loss is and how far away I am from the stop loss versus the current market price. Now again, understanding the risks are critical, but it is really one of the strongest points and arguments that need to be made. My current margin is $31, and if I walk away from the table, now I'm only going to lose $4.63. When you are looking at your trading, when you are thinking about changing techniques, you have to look at the consequences of every single detail from the strategy itself, the history that the strategy has had, the positions you are holding, and how much money you are going to lose if you decide to get out of it immediately. Having a $160 profit over nine months and having $34 as a net loss is a consequence for the passive strategy that makes it too expensive to get out of right away. But having the situation as I do with Australian dollar means I can completely walk away right now and be perfectly fine because it's only taken me two months of actual profit to get where I'm at. As you move forward, think about all of the implications that your trading has. Think about your real expenses that you have to pay to actually trade. These are all of the things that really come into play with algorithmic trading that don't come into play with manual trading. If you're even thinking about getting into algorithmic trading, think about this. Think about these expenses up front and how you're going to spend at least six months to a year taking losses because of your expenses before you actually begin to see real world profits. Algorithmic trading is nice because the machine can do a lot for you 24 seven, but it's not nice because you still have to pay for the machine. Hopefully this has helped open a door to more behind what goes on and some of my own thinking process and some of the things you need to really begin thinking about in order to be serious on algorithmic trading. Thinking about your expenses, your availability and ability to actually pay your bills. Thinking about how you want your strategies to play out. All of that has to be part of your overall trading picture. It isn't just about buying and selling the asset and making money with it. There's so much more that goes into algorithmic trading than just the basics. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Let me know. Tell me how you like to trade or even what your favorite pair is, whether it's cryptocurrency or Forex. Are you a passive trader or are you an aggressive trader? It's interesting to see how different people apply different trading techniques and how they incorporate their own lifestyles into their trading. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with anybody who might be interested. Thank you for watching and until next time.